All right, hi everyone. Um, I'm Emily, and today I'll be giving a 10 minute intro to web accessibility and more generally building inclusive web experiences. First, I'll share a conceptual overview of accessibility and inclusive design, what it is, why it matters. Then I'll show a few practical tips and tricks that you can use immediately after this presentation to incorporate accessibility into your apps, including some tricks specific to single page apps and modern UIs. So what is accessibility? Um, strictly defined, a web app that is accessible is usable by a person with a disability or a differently abled person. This might include people with limited vision or hearing, motor disabilities, cognitive impairments, so on and so forth. There actually exists an entire array of um, assistive technologies, things like screen readers, special tablets, eye trackers, joysticks, um, that allow everyone to interact with websites. Um, Apple actually has a really cool screen reader built into all Macs called Voice Command. You just hit it, Command F5 and you can play with it. It's, kind of interesting. But, um, so building for accessibility means adjusting your design and execution as a developer so that these technologies can parse your code. Uh, most do so by following semantic hierarchies within DOM trees. So you know, when you do H1, H2, they sort of go in order um, in order to literally read your website out loud. Um, it's important to note, though, that when we talk about accessibility, right, we, we mean not just people with, say, limited visual hearing, but also people living in rural areas, older people, people in developing countries, anyone who doesn't have, you know, pristine, crystal clear internet access at all times. Um, and because of that, I think accessibility is an interesting entry point into the entire world of user experience design. And, you know, inclusive design matters, especially in this industry. Um, in fact, at one conference, an, accessibi an accessibility advocate exhorted to a room full of developers, design like you give a damn. Um, and I'm going to read this entire thing because I really like it. Um, design like you give a damn. Like you give a damn about creating energetic, exciting, innovative projects. Like you give a damn about creating things that are elegant, beautiful, superbly functional. Like we give a damn about the people, all of the people, who are going to use those things that we spend time creating and building. Um, and so Leone was actually riffing here on the title of a book by um, Cameron Sinclair on architecture in humanitarian crises, which I think actually just serves to further illustrate her point. Inclusive design is really important. Um, it's better for everyone involved. It's a philosophy and a process that, inc that ensures your app is as useful as possible to as many people as possible. And if you think about it, for each and every one of us, there are entire groups of people who will look at our work and experience it through different eyes, from different perspective. That's a really cool creative constraint. That means that we as developers have to take into account other people and how they perceive what we do. So from the craft perspective for the developer, a bottom line perspective for the product and the business, and of course an experience perspective for our end users, I would argue inclusive is a win-win. And accessibility is just one corner of design inclusively. It's a concrete way to get started. So how do we do that? Well, it's really not as tough as one might assume. It's um, like, like most design, it's best when considered at the start of your project rather than sort of worked in piecemeal after. Um, here's a couple of places where you can go to read um, the standards and sort of the ways in which people have um, adopted this in the industry. Um, the W3 Consortium maintains a spec called the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. Um, it's just a, you know, it's a spec, it's a common framework. Um, this Teach Access tutorial, though, is really, really good. It's a set of code examples and really fast tutorials. It takes like 30 minutes um, that you can use to um, sort of see this in practice. For me, though, for the rest of my presentation, I'm just going to cover a couple of common things that you can do in your apps you know, today to make them a little more accessible. So the easiest quick one that a lot of people might know, including alt tags in your images, this is super important. So um, this ensures people with limited vision using screen readers and also people with you know, data caps or people using um, internet connections that are a bit slower, make sure that they can read your, uh, your apps. So here we see on the left a properly done image tag um, with an alt set to um, a very descriptive phrase. Um, with this, a screen reader would read that phrase and a data capped user would see that phrase um, where the image is supposed to be. Without it, as we see on the right, a screen reader would actually read just the straight URL of that image, so literally HTTP colon backspace backspace. Um, they would read that actual URL um, instead of your image text and a data capped user would just see an empty box. Another one that you might not know about, viewport scale. So this is actually super important. Um, this involves making sure that the viewport of your app is set such that people can pinch and zoom, right? Think something you don't typically think about, but um, on mobile interface, it's really important. Just command plus on your keyboard in case your font's too small. Um, to do this, you should never set a maximum scale on your viewport. Instead, always set your initial scale to one. This allows people to use those things to read it. Third one, so we've talked a little bit about focusing um, in apps. So this is really important for people who need to navigate completely by keyboard, right? Um, and this 
takes into account people who have issues with fine motor control who can't really point a cursor um, super effectively. But also just, you know, if your trackpad doesn't work that day or if your mouse runs out of battery, there's lots of reasons why this is really important. Um, you'll note here the blue box around the second text box, which appears on default around your focused elements. Um, removing that box is actually a really common urge, especially in sort of design-heavy websites where you want a lot of control. Um, but this actually makes it impossible for someone who's navigating with their keyboard only to know where they are on the screen. Um, so never do this. Um, as a side note, it's actually possible to alter that. It's actually possible to set a different color, for example, within your outline. Um, so that fits better with your design. That's something to think about, too. So other things you can do to, in, to ensure, um, I guess, proper usability in your apps, proper color contrast. There's a ratio that's 4.5 to 1 that's really cool. Um, and I'll share sort of a color contrast um, analyzer at the end of this that you can use to check your colors out. Um, other things, differentiating, differentiating your elements by texture as well as by color um, for those with color blindness. And ensuring subtitles are available for embedded audio and video. So all of these things, right, it's easy for us to imagine how these might improve the experience of traditional websites, but what about modern web interfaces? After all, our modern UIs are fraught with a range of challenges. You've got custom dropdowns, modals, tooltips, accordions, and more, not to mention live content updates and async requests that may return at any time. Those are all really hard for something like a screen reader to parse and read. To bridge that gap, in 2014, W3 introduced a new standard called ARIA, which stands for Accessible Rich Internet Applications. Um, so remember, like I so said, before, before ARIA, assistive technologies worked primarily by literally just reading the DOM tree to tell where a button was or where a link was. Um, but because UI has evolved such that we work in an event-driven paradigm where a user's hover might kick off another action further down um, your, your call stack, we need something a little, a little richer, a little, a little more flexible. Um, so ARIA makes these possible by dividing elements into roles and states. Um, these are defined as attributes on your DOM nodes, so you can, as you can write some pretty simple JS and CSS, just like you would for any CSS property to, to affect that. The cool part, though, and the part that I think is really important for us uh, as JavaScript developers, um, ARIA includes a feature called Live Regions. So let's consider, say you've got a real-time app like a stock washer or really any single page app that renders new views based on state. As a screen reader parses your DOM tree, how would it know when a change had been made and when to read that live change? So in this code example, we see a drop down select element with the, uh, with, with, uh, with the attribute aria controls set to the value bird info. That's hooked up to um, a div further down the page with an ID of bird info, which renders the user selection. So note the attribute aria live set to polite. This indicates to a screen reader that's aria enabled that the content in that div might be updated. It also sets how quickly the screen reader should respond to the user selection. So when it's set to polite, an update is set to low priority, and it'll wait, it'll literally just wait for a user to pause before reading it out loud. The, the other setting on ARIA Live is called aggressive, and it reads your update immediately <laughs> right when you start. So ARIA Live is relatively new, and the Live Regions feature isn't yet well documented. I think the MDN spec actually has a couple of regions marked test. Um, but it's a powerful and impactful third dimension that affects how someone might experience your app. So um, a couple key takeaways for me. Um, first, inclusive design is the way to go. Um, as developers, you know, it's, it's a cool creative challenge that makes you think about what you're doing a little more deeply. Second, accessibility isn't a pain. It's, it's accessible to us. It's, it's pretty easy to incorporate into your designs and, and your builds. I've given you a couple concrete things you can use, and I would encourage you to check out those resources for a deep dive. Lastly, ARIA is really cool, and it lends um, an important third dimension to how we as developers of JavaScript apps can expect people to experience what we create. So um, here are some of those resources I mentioned. Definitely check some of these out. I especially like that Medium article. If you like um, weird medical accidents, it's really interesting. Um, but yeah, that's about it. <laughs>